YouTube, welcome back to the Blades to Be Shop and another project video. In my last video, I talked about that titanium that I purchased and just some tips on purchasing it so you get exactly what you want, which in my case I didn't. So, I'm trying to come up with something else I can do with those extra pieces of titanium that I have that aren't going to work for knife handles. So, I came up with this design for a bottle opener. So, I'm going to take my Blades to Be logo and I'm going to incorporate that into a bottle opener. So, you know, we'll take a better look at this on the computer, but we got a couple of B's up here for the wings. We got the Roman numeral two down there for the legs. And hey, we'll put uh, up around his beak, we'll put a bottle opener in there. So that's what we're gonna make with these titanium plates. So I'm gonna go through that today. I'm gonna make uh, one out of aluminum just to make sure the design and the programming works. And then we'll make a couple out of titanium. I'm also gonna see if I can flame that titanium a little bit and put like feathers on there. I haven't been working on flaming titanium too much. So we'll see how that works. I've watched a couple videos on it looks doable we'll see how it actually turns out here but to, to start with we're going to get up on the computer i'll go through my fusion 360 on how i designed this and then how i did the cam to be able to hold this and machine both sides so we'll run through that in fusion 360 and then we'll come back down here on the tormach and we'll cut a couple of these pieces and we'll see how it goes so for those of you subscribe to the channel i sure appreciate you subscribing appreciate all the comments coming through haven't had a chance to subscribe yet, great time to hit that subscribe button right now and you'll know exactly when the next video is coming out. But for right now, let's head on up to the computer. Let's take a look at Fusion 360. Let's get this designed, let's get the cam done and then we'll get down here on the Tormach and get these cut. Let's go. All right, let's take a quick look at the design on this before we get down to the machine and start cutting it. So as you can see, we've got a eagle looking design here. I've got uh, the wings looking like bees. So there's my two bees. I've got these legs here looking like the Roman numeral two. So that is how I incorporated my blades to be logo into this bottle opener. And then right in here in the beak area is where I put the actual bottle opener portion of it. Just copy that off of any uh, standard bottle opener I found down in my kitchen. Three eighths diameter hole seem to be about right. Have enough room in here to be able to get that over top of the bottle. So the overall design on this, nothing too complicated. Just got in there and, and made my sketch extruded that out, extruded the holes through there, just used a series of straight lines and contours to get it shaped how I wanted. So once the design was done, then while I had it in here in design mode, I also worked on making the fixture to be able to hold this. So machining the top side, pretty straightforward there when we get over to the cam side, but I needed to be able to flip this over and machine it from the back, keep it all oriented. So I went ahead and made a fixture here while I was doing that. To do that, I actually ended up making two fixtures. So first, I just made one piece of material, the size that I was going to make my fixture. So I went with two and a half inches by five inches. That's the material I know that I have handy down in my shop for a piece of aluminum. So I made that quarter inch thick piece of material and then I took my original sketch and I projected that down onto my material. Now what you're looking at here is something I did to it afterwards. So afterwards, I thought I was going to drill holes into all those corners to make it easier to machine the titanium. Ended up not doing that. Uh, so this is sort of what I've got left over. We'll look at the mirror image of this in a moment, and then it's going to make a lot more sense. But I took my material for the jig, projected that eagle sketch down onto it, and... This is what I really made, is I just took the portions inside the wings and I projected those and extruded those through to my sketch and then got rid of all the material around it. So just the way I did it, I extruded it down a little bit deeper and then I took and flattened off this whole space in between. So my material is two inches. So I went an extra hundred thou on the top and a hundred thou on the bottom just to make sure I don't have to have my plate perfectly centered. And that still gave me some material on the edges here to grab in the vise. So extruded those through, left the other material, and I put the bore on there so that I have a place to be able to line that up. So that should make more sense when we get over to the, the cam side. But to create this, I actually created that first on this plate, going through my eagle, and then I've created the mirror image of it. So that's what's over here. So that way I can put the eagle opener on there upside down to be able to cut the backside. So then we get rid of that piece, and really the... Eagle and the jig are really the only two pieces that we're gonna go over there and talk about on the cam side. So since this is the mirror image, we flip the eagle upside down over it and it's gonna fit perfectly right on these pieces. Drilled and tapped some holes in there, be able to put a washer on top 
and bolt it down. So that's how I'm going to hold it onto the jig. And I'll mention this later in the video as well, that there's likely way more efficient ways to do this. And if I was a manufacturing facility, and if I was going to crank out hundreds of these, I would need to do them a lot more than one at a time. But when you're a hobby shop guy, you know, having all this extra material and making jigs when I'm not going to be making large numbers and maybe only going to make 10 or 20 at a time and then come back later and make 10 or 20 more, then making them one at a time is, is what works for me. I don't need to have big jigs around that I'm not going to use. Very different between uh, my mentality and how I want to produce these versus a, a full-blown manufacturing facility. Uh, for me, spending a little extra time on the machine, that's part of the hobby. That's what I'm getting out in the shop to do. So that's the enjoyment factor for me. Let's go take a look at the manufacturing side of this. All right, so to manufacture this, as I mentioned first, I was going to go through and drill out all of these corner points, and I thought that was going to save a little bit on bits. Sometimes I have trouble breaking bits going through machining in titanium. Ultimately, I decided not to do that, and I'm just going to go with a standard sort of machining operation. So let's get rid of that one. So this is what we're going to end up machining. So I started with the top side, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to drill the eyeball out, get that piece all the way through. And then I'm going to bore close to size on this. I did want to get rid of most of the material out of there and just make it a little bit easier to machine around in, in that curved area. Also, that is what I'm going to use to line this up when I flip it over. So I wanted that to be a through hole to make it easier to line it up on the backside. After that, I'm going to go through and contour around the edge. Again, I've got these speeds and feeds set up for titanium. So our test piece we're going to cut will be aluminum. Going to be a little bit slow and extra cuts, but I find that in titanium with a 1 8 bit, about 25 or 30 thou deep is all I can do. So we're going to go around that profile uh, three times to go 100 thou deep. So it's going to go 33 thou per pass and feed down through there. And then it's going to cut out these contours in the wings. And then we're going to go around and we're going to put a beveled edge around the entire piece. And then the last part is the, the bevel around the eyeball. Now, it's not actually going to cut between the feet. There's not enough room, but I'm still going to bevel across there. And I have the my bevel tool. It's overhanging a little bit, so it's going to cut a little bit deeper in there. So even though there's, they are not going to be completely separated, should give a very good finished look there between the feet. So there's our machining op for the top half. And then for the back side, going to look very similar on the back. So it's going to first go in... And it's going to put the contour in these first two. So we're going to flip it over and I'm going to bolt it in these large cutouts in the wing. I'm going to bolt it down there and it's going to put the bevel on the small ones. And then I put in a pause here. I put in a manual uh, M01 brake so that it'll pause so that I can go in and move the bolts. So then I'm going to take the bolts out of here and put the bolts into the outer portion of the wing. It's going to cut the bevel on that portion. Put in another pause. And then I'm going to add my other bolts in. So now it's going to be bolted down in all four places. And then it's going to go and just complete the contour around the outside again. Pretty much the same doing 33 thou per cut. I'm going to go through there. It should meet up with our cuts from the other side to cut all the way through. And then we're going to put the same bevel around there and then go do the same thing with the bevel around the eye. Now, again, just like I went through here, it's just cutting into the material with the overhang. Same thing. The eye, we only have a small hole in the middle. It's going to cut the oval is just going to be cut with that bevel tool. So not going quite as deep on the eyeball as I am around the other pieces with the overhang. So that's going to be the backside of our machining. And then for the jig, let's get this set back up to the top. And let me turn off the eagle and we'll get into my jig piece. So for the jig, we're going to go through and just use a larger cutter to start with to get rid of a lot of the material out of there. Just doing a pocket, do another 2D pocket with a smaller tool bit to go in there and get closer and do a finish cut around all those contours. We're going to go ahead and bore out that spot where the bottle opener is. Again, I've got that set up because that is going to be where I'm going to be able to align this piece in the future to continue to set this up for repeated use on the jig. That's going to be my XYZ lineup area. And then I'm just going to go through and, and drill and tap some 440 holes in there and that's what I'm going to use to bolt that down. So that's the operation on the jig plate. Pretty basic. Let's go take a quick look at the simulation on these and then we're going to be ready to head down to the machine and get these cut. All right let's take a look at the simulation on cutting our front side first. So we're going to go through. We're going to punch that hole for the eye. Going to bore out for the bottle opener portion. And then we're going to get in here and we're going to cut out for our profile. All right, so that's just going to keep working its way around. It's going to take multiple cuts. We'll speed that up a little bit. 
And then it's going to go in and cut out the wing pockets. For those, it's going all the way through. We don't need to continue to do those from the back side. Allows us to bevel them. All right, we went around, we did our bevels, we beveled on the eye, and we're complete. So our simulation looks good for the top side. Let's take a look at what we're doing here on the back side. All right, so our simulation on the back side. Let's get a little better angle here. There we go. Slow this back down a little bit. And first thing we're going to do, we're going to go those outer pockets. Now, it'll actually pause for us there. We'll change our bolts. And then it's going to pick up and do the rest of these operations. And it's going to go around and cut our bevels, bevel the eye, and we're done. So again, everything worked like it's supposed to, but it will pause for us. We'll see that when we get down on the machine. It'll pause after we do these cuts, let us move bolts, pause again after these ones to put bolts back in, and then it'll finish the rest of it. So that part is looking good. And we'll get back onto the top side, and let's take a quick look at the simulation for this jig. Slow that back down a little. All right, so we're going to get in there with our large cutter first, get rid of the most of the material out of that. We're not going quite full depth. Leave a little bit of room for a finish cut. And there we go. We get in there with a smaller tool for our finish cut. And that's looking good so far. We'll speed that up just a little bit. Got one little wasted spiral down on there. And we'll go through and do our drill and tap. So we've got, again, this one little wasted motion right here. I'm not going to go in and try to clean that up. It's uh, it's not going to add a significant amount of time to it for what we're doing. We've got it drilled and tapped. I, I have it tapping most of the way through with that rigid tap, but I will still finish tap those by hand. So that simulation is also looking good. So there it is. There is our design, and there is our manufacturing, our cam process for these. I've got all of these sent out to the machine. Let's go head back downstairs. Let's take a look at our setup sheet for this, and let's get ready to go on our first operation. All right, so we've got our setup sheet here for the first process, which is going to be uh, machining on the top side here. We'll go around the profile. We're going to go all the way through those holes, and then we'll bevel that top edge, and then we'll get ready to flip this over and put it onto our jig. I'm going to cut one of these out of aluminum, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut one out of titanium. Then we'll get our jig plate in there and get that done. So for tools, pretty simple, just 13, 20, 22, and 51. We've got those loaded up in there with 13, 22, 51, and 20 right over there. So we've got our tools loaded up. We're ready to go. I've got my piece of aluminum in here. I started with some quarter inch. I already got it thinned down to the 180, 190, the same thickness that that titanium is going to be. So I'm going to come in here and I just put a mark. It's not super critical, but I want to, you know, we're getting pretty close to the vise with that 1 8 tool bit. It's going to be really close to the vise, but we should have clearance. So I want to zero in on the center of that bottle opener portion. That's what I want to mark. So I just put my paper template on here, made sure that I was nice and centered up. So I want to X and Y to be right on that dot. And then obviously Z on my top surface here. So it's just going to be more eyeballing it. I don't have a, an exact measurement to that. So we're going to eyeball X and Y on the dot, and then we'll make sure we probe for Z. We'll get that set up, and I've got it right here on the edge of the vise. So when I put my titanium one in here, we should be able to just slap that in and go. Let's get this probed, and then we'll start cutting. All right, so I just eyeballed that probe on X and Y on my center punch mark. And now we're going to come down and set our Z. All right, there we go with our top side file loaded. That's what we should be machining. Profile that out, get our bevels on the top side, get the hole drilled for the eye and everything. And uh, then we should be ready to make our titanium one and then get it on the jig for the other one. See how she does. <laughs>
think first op is looking good. I made one mistake. I didn't go all the way through on my profile here, which I wanted to do. I want to save just the outer contour uh, to be able to go all the way through from the backside, but I wanted to go all the way through these other ones and all the way through between the legs there. So I need to go back and do that. But otherwise, I think we're looking good. I know it only cut 185 deep. I know my piece of titanium did actually clean up closer to 190, so I need to go readjust the thickness and, and just make it cut through an extra 10 thou or so on the bottom side of these. So I'm just gonna go reset the bottom of the hole before I run the titanium one. And I'm gonna go make sure I get that one to cut all the way through. And uh, we will recut that before I pull this piece of aluminum out of here, but we'll be all set for that titanium one. So a couple tweaks to the code and we're gonna see how this uh, is set up on titanium. We'll come back, give her another cut. All right, so I went up and I tweaked the code to make sure we're going to pop through these ones all the way. So I went a little bit deeper in case my titanium is a little thicker. This one, this is actually part of the outside contour, even though it does that uh, separately since it can't go between the feet. So it is going to come down and cut that from the backside. So that'll be fine. We'll leave that one. And also, I mean, I am just right there. I mean, I've got about 5,000 clearance on the top where I have a good 20, 30,000 clearance on the bottom. So I'm gonna adjust my X a little bit before I put my titanium piece in there so that I'm gonna shift it um, a good 10 thou this way and make sure that I've got a little more clearance off my vise up there before I start the next one. But otherwise we should be set. I'm gonna go ahead and drop in my piece of titanium. I will recheck the Z on it. So I'll make sure that I do have that correct. And while I'm checking the Z on it, then that's when I'll make sure I adjust my X a little bit. So let's get that done. We'll get our piece of titanium in there. We'll run this again. Well, there we go. The titanium one turned out just as good as the aluminum one. So speeds and feeds seem to be good. Got a little better on our clearance up there. So stayed a little further away from the vise. Still plenty of room down here at the bottom. So we are good to go in there. So let's get this out of here. Let's get our jig plate set up in there. And then it's going to be time to go ahead and I'm just going to again use um, Actually, the jig plate, we're coming in off the corner. So we're gonna set up off the corner for the jig plate. And then after that, we will uh, zero in on the hole before we put our pieces on there. So let's get our jig plate set up in here, get it cut out and ready to hold onto these. It takes me about two minutes total time to probe apart every time I move it around or make an adjustment. I have not tried one of the electronic probes, but I can tell you I sure have been happy with this Heimer manual 3D probe, and it seems pretty quick and efficient to me. Haven't had any issues with it, so really no desire to move to one of the electronic probes. And here's a setup sheet for our jig plate. We've got that ready to go. So we're gonna cut this plate and it's gonna drop in those recesses for the wings and that's what we're gonna to use to bolt it down and cut our backside of this. So we've only got four different tools loaded in there, 19, 21, 55, and 62. So we're basically just contouring around there and then we're gonna drill and tap those holes so that we'll be able to clamp it down. Got our program loaded up in there. So we're set and we just probed that part. So there's our plate in there. Should just take a couple minutes. Let's get this cut and we'll be ready to do the backside. <laughs>
Well, that went pretty smooth. There's our jig. So I rigid tapped those little 440 holes almost all the way through. I just, you know, I'm still not confident going too deep with those. So I finished tapping those by hand, but there is our jig plate. And let's see how our piece fits on there. Yeah, it's on there pretty nice. Just very little movement. So we should have good lineup. Now I'm gonna go double check the program. I am 90% sure I wanna bolt to these inner holes and it's going to chamfer those outer holes first, but I am gonna double check that to make sure. And I also set up a pause between the programs. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead. I need to reset up. I need to set up on this bore. That's my new XYZ. So I'm going to go ahead and set up on that for X, Y. I'm going to put my plate on here. I'm going to set up for Z and then I'm going to pull it off and I'm actually just going to start the program, make sure that it, uh, make sure that it runs on these outer holes and make sure that it pauses after that before it tries to go to these ones. That'll give me time to switch bolts. I'll pull the bolts out of here, drop them in the outer side out there, and then we'll kick off the program. It's going to pause again after that. So I can put all four bolts in and then it'll run around and finish our profile. So let me uh, go ahead and get it probed and let's make sure that our pauses are in there where they're supposed to be. When probing inside of a bore like this, really like the PathPilot software, it keeps it nice and simple. First you eyeball center one direction. So I've eyeballed on the X axis and I'm probing Y. I zero one side, I go to the other side and I put divide by two into the uh, PathPilot software. Then I find the exact center. And now that I know I'm in the center, I'm going to probe X, do the same thing. Probe one side, zero, probe the other side, and then hit divide by two to find the center. And since I don't know for sure that I was exactly in the center when I eyeballed X, I'm going to go back and I'm going to probe Y a second time, doing the same thing. Hit one side, go to the other side, divide by two, just to make sure that I am completely in the center for X and Y. So good, easy way to uh, use a probe on a bore. All right, let's run it. Let's make sure it cuts the two outer ones and let's make sure it pauses after it's done. All So I'm glad I ran it as a test here. It did cut the right places. It beveled those two outer pockets like it was supposed to, but it didn't pause. So what I put into the code was an M01 break, and I did not have the M01 break turned on on the PathPilot software, so it didn't recognize to stop. So we'll try it again. This time I got the break, I got the pause, but I restarted at the beginning instead of after the first cut. Got it right third time. All right, well, famous last words, I think I've got it. So it's still an M1 pause, so I had to turn on the M1 cycle brake to make it stop after that. Uh, it didn't stop the spindle after the first one. It did stop the spindle after the second one, so not quite sure the difference, but I was able to hit stop, and then I told it where to restart on uh, that line of code and got it to kick off again. So I think I should be set. Let's go ahead and get our piece in there, and let's run this.
piece five minute and 12 second cycle time on the back side so it cut pretty nicely definitely held in there well the the breakthrough since there's really no place for that material to go it really did toss that piece out of there a little bit got away with it on the aluminum not sure i'm going to get away with it on the titanium we're going to give it a whirl but that may snap my cutter if that's the case i guess i'll have to do a, a tab there to break through and make sure i leave one tab to snap that off and clean it up so May have to go and and uh, and work on tabs a little bit there just to make sure that I don't ruin it. But otherwise, I think it's working. Let's go ahead and see how our titanium one cuts in there. I checked the video on this and it took right at about five minutes total time to change the tool get up and running again i have my g55 work offset set up so that uh, that is my manual tool setter on that fixed jaw on the vise so i quickly go in change my work offset to g55 get that manual tool setter on there and go over into my vise obviously change put a new tool in the tool holder come down on here drop it onto this manual tool setter, reset the height on that tool, and then it is up and running and ready to go. And there is our titanium one. Almost made it all the way through today without breaking anything. You see I broke that 1 8 cutter going around the profile. Uh, I slowed the feed down a little bit after that, but really I don't think that was it. I think that one just got dull. No idea how long I've been running that 1 8 cutter in there on other things. So I think it just got a little dull and finally snapped it. So there we go. We've got a good setup now. I know there's got to be a better way to hold both sides of something. And obviously if I was a production shop, I'd make a jig that held a whole lot more of these, but that's kind of the difference between hobby guys and the production shops is uh, in order for me to make a bigger jig, I'd have to buy another piece of aluminum and then it's just harder to recover my cost on that since I'm not actually charging these out to somebody, I'm just gonna try to sell them. So for me, making them one at a time, not the most efficient, but as a hobby guy, I get to get out here and run my machine and spending a little bit of extra time is actually beneficial for me where that would not be for a production shop. So I'm happy with that. Let's get this off of there and uh, hey, let's do the final test and let's make sure this can actually open a bottle. All right, well, obviously alcohol has no business in the shop. These are the only bottles that I have with a cap, so that's why we've got it in here. So let's give this a try. So this is gonna be an upside down bottle opener. So we're gonna hook underneath and pull up. Worked like a charm. So I think we can call that absolute success right there on those two openers. Really happy with how those turned out. And now let's get the torch on and let's see if we can figure out how to flame up this titanium one and uh, get it looking like it's got some feathers on it. Stand by for that one. 
All right, now my goal is to get feather-like blue color on here. Like I say, I've not been flaming titanium much. I've got it on a piece of aluminum, try to keep some heat out of it. I'm gonna put on my finest tip on my torch. We're just gonna see what happens. A little experiment here. I'm gonna kind of start here at the neck, work my way across this one, kind of pretend like I'm on that same line over here and then just work my way down and we'll see what happens. There we go. Well, the feather concept, that didn't work, but hey, we're getting some cool color out of it, so we'll go with that. Alright, well we didn't get feathers, but for a first attempt, I would say that is pretty good. Let me cool that off and we'll take a better look at it here. Well YouTube, there's a wrap on another project here in the Blades to Be shop. Hope you enjoyed hanging out as we made this Blades to Be Eagle bottle opener. A lot of fun. Uh, the flame titanium, not sure that turned out exactly as I thought. I kind of thought with that really fine tip, I'd be able to get a little bit more of a feather. Hey, maybe with a little bit of practice I can do that, but you know, at least we got some, some pretty cool color out of this. I'll drop in a couple of photographs of it. I think those tend to turn out a little better sometimes than what you get on video, so we'll drop in a couple pictures. Here's a couple with different lighting. It's hard to get the lighting just right on these to really highlight the colors, but there's front and back, a little bit less light, and then here's front and back with a, a little bit more light on them and still trying to keep the glare down. And I went ahead and bead blasted the aluminum one and put some uh, 550 cord in there to make that one into a keychain. With the feet connected, that hole between them works perfect. My goal with these is to recoup some of my stupid tacks, as I call it, out of the titanium plates that I bought that I'm not able to clean them up at the right thickness. They don't seem to be too hard on tools. only broke one one-eighth cutter today making this one, so I'm hoping I can knock these out without uh, spending too much money on tooling. If you're subscribed to the channel, sure appreciate you taking the time to watch these videos. Hope you're enjoying learning about this 1100MX and using Fusion 360. If you're new to the channel, want to make sure you know when that next video comes out, great time to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, I hope you're out in your own shop working on some projects of your own, trying out something new like we did here today, and I'll be here working on that next video. Till I get that next video released, 
Take care.